Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Uh, what the fuck? Why am I here and what the fuck are you wearing? Uh, uh, what? This is just a regular runner's outfit. Where's Dan? I get the headband. Shorts, running shoes. Why the zombie makeup? Guys, sorry I'm late. Uh, you know, uh, she's still... Writing, writing me about, about the guest, guest spot. Uh, writing me about the guest spot. Uh-huh. At 4.30 in the morning, when we already have a guest coming on. So where were you really there, Dan? So what's with all the zombies? Josh signed us up for a fun run, apparently. With zombies? Am I missing something? Well, Mr. Moron here was just about to answer that question for me. Hmm. Hi, guys. It's, it's obviously a zombie 5K. Well, yeah, I mean, the big-ass sign over there kind of explains that. Yes, Dr. Dumbass, why are we here? Well, we just start off on the run, and the zombies will chase you. If you get bit, you know, by one of the zombies, you become a zombie, and then you chase the other runners that haven't been bit yet. I'm confused. Why? Well, that's because Sir Stupid over here has yet to explain anything. Well, what's with all the weird names there, Tom? It's 5 a.m. And this is the part where you explain why we're supposed to run before sunrise. Come on, guys. It's obviously for the episode. Tonight's episode? Yeah. How is this related to tonight's episode? No witty name this time, Tom? 5 a.m. Well, the movie is about fast zombies, right? Fast z- What? No! Oh, Jesus Christ. The quick and the dead? Oh my god. Josh, it's a western, a quick draw contest. Oh. That makes more sense. Well, thank you, Mr. Brilliant. Hey, Tom, you um, you messed up your whole thing. It's supposed to have some, like, the same letter, so it, it really should have been... Uh, okay, just, yeah, um, my, my man, okay. my man, we okay. get it, we get okay. it. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. We're taking Jimmy Stewart to the shootest. John Wayne to True Grit. Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder. Tom Cruise to The Mummy. Russell Crowe to the quick and the dead. Gene Hackman to Superman. Fly into the hero's journey with Tom, Dan, and Josh and race faster than a speeding bullet towards the superhero films of superhero films, Superman! You will believe that a fire pit can fly! Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to another episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Tom, hero named Funny Bone, and do we have a side splitter for you as we still flying high on the hero's journey. Ain't nothing holding us back, baby. Not even bad connected universe starter movies. Tonight, though, is no universe starter. But it is our penultimate episode as we make our way to 1978's, what, up in the sky? It's a bird, it's a plane, Superman! As per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them to this one. And now, to tell us who we're watching and what we're watching, I fly things over to Dan! Thank you, Tom. Dan here, hero name Enforcer. And last week, we followed Tom Cruise from Days of Thunder to 2017's The Mummy. And the consensus was that uh, Brendan Fraser may have been too pure for this earth. But dumping exposition onto Tom Cruise and burying the plot like ancient ruins was one Russell Crowe, who we are following tonight to 1995's The Quick and the Dead, also starring Sharon Stone, Gene Hackman, and a very young Leo DiCaprio. And really just a 
kind of an all-star cast of both established stars and stars just beginning to rise in 1995. But hey, that's not my job tonight. To tell us more about that, I'm going to send things over to Numbers. Why, thank you, Enforcer. Numbers here. Keep it on the down low, but my secret identity name is Josh. And yes, tonight we are watching The Quick and the Dead, an apparent not-zombie movie. And uh, as mentioned before, it does have a lot of well-established actors, like Gene Hackman and Sharon Stone, and uh, a lot of other up-and-comers, like Leonardo DiCaprio, and that one Russell Crowe, who we know from movies like Master and Commander, and another bad movie that he did that I can't think of right now. But this movie was directed by Sam Raimi, who would later go on to direct Spider-Man. And uh, it was released February uh, 1995. It has a running time of 108 minutes and a uh, budget of $35 million. And I'll tell you what, guys. This thing just totally just robbed the box office. <laughs> and it told in a total of $18.6 million. Ooh, I hope they all didn't spend it in one place. <laughs> I know, I know. So... It ran for about three weeks in the box office. Apparently, the 90s loved Westerns as much as I do now. Clearly. So, uh, yes, clearly, right? But to give a snapshot of what the box office looked like on its release weekend, at number five was on its ninth week of release. At that point, grossing in $111 million was Dumb and Dumber. At number four was a movie I have never heard of called Boys on the Side. Number three was Legends of the Fall on its eighth week of release, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a Western as well. And that actually grossed, at that point, $48 million. I believe Legends of the Fall was the one where Liam Neeson tried to do a Western accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably the only redeemable part of that movie is watching him try to do that. And then uh, at number two comes in the movie we're watching tonight, grossing at $6.5 million on its first week of release. The Quick and the Dead. And then at number one, also on its first week of release, was uh, Adam Sandler's big hooray into movies, Billy Madison. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Billy Madison was kind of... It was good for an Adam Sandler film. It uh, was like his first three to five movies weren't terrible. Like, Happy Gilmore is probably my favorite of his. But, anywho, mm -hmm. that is just... It only lasted about three weeks, and it easily got outclassed. Um, by the Brady Bunch movie, which came out the next week. It grossed more in two weeks than The Quick and the Dead grossed the entirety of its run. In, so, in defense of the Brady Bunch movie, especially the first one, that movie's hilarious. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Nobody's yeah. arguing with you there. Okay. That movie, that's a good movie. Like, Brady Bunch was a good movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, it was not very well received in the box office or critics. Well, I guess it was received slightly well, it got a 6.5 on IMDb and a 59% in Rotten Tomatoes. So That's not as good as some of the clunkers we've seen in the past, but better than others. That, it, that have grossed significantly more money in the box office. Yeah, well, I, I, go I was going to say, I was gonna say about around a 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. is. I'm starting to figure out that that's the critics' version of meh. Yeah, I think 60% or higher is a fresh rating. Yeah, but I mean, just going on just what we've watched... Um, outside of a, a few movies, like 60% on Rotten Tomatoes is the critic's version of meh. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but I'm curious of what a certain critic has thought about this movie. One in particular, the name rhymes with bomb. That was the first word I could think of. I'm sorry, that was terrible. No, no, um, that most people, when they think of me, they think, that that guy's the bomb, yo. So it's, it's a natural, natural correlation. I understand. I honestly... Moving on. <laughs> We're not film critics. Tom is especially not one because he'd hate everything. Actually, I was wait, referencing Tom the fact that he walks around and crop dusts <laughs> everybody and drops bombs. But anywho, Tom, what are your expectations on this film? That was a beautiful segue, by the way. Thank you, that Josh. Was, that was... <laughs> it was. Honestly, I've... It's been a long time since I've seen this film. I loved it when I saw it back in, like, high school. Um, VHS. Uh... Then again, Sam Raimi's always kind of... Well, at least that period of Sam Raimi was my go-to. And apparently was Sharon Stone's. She, he was handpicked by Sharon Stone to direct this film, honestly, which surprised me. This is one of those films, by the way, guys, I'm not going to try to overwhelm this section, but this is one of those films, just looking up, is where the making of it 
is more interesting than the film itself. Because there's a lot of stuff that went in the background. Sharon Stone had, um, I guess, co-producer rights. So a lot of the people on this film, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe, she picked. She's like, I want those two, no matter what which was impressive for Russell Crowe at the time because he'd only been in some foreign films. And the film that got him noticed by Sharon Stone was a film called Romper Stomper. So he was coming in hungry, and I remember him being very good in the film. I can't remember if he did an American accent, so Nigel, we're going to find out because we all know when Australians do American accents, the results can be so choice. I I don't know. I I mean... Mel Gibson's accent isn't that bad. And of course he's lived here for so long now. It's kind of Mm -hmm. hard. It's weird. He's the opposite. It's weird to hear him with an Australian accent now. Yeah, but I'm sure I haven't seen any early Mel Gibson. So I'm sure his transition was a little rough, but whose transition was not rough was Leonardo DiCaprio. Who's actually surprising. He he was Oscar nominated for eating Gilbert grape before Mm -hmm. this film came out. Like, he was just coming off of some major hits. So it's this guy was an up and cover. All of the people, like Gary Sinise, Lance Hendrickson, Keith David, this is a film with a lot of names. It has a lot of people going into this. It had some A plus people background. It was written by Simon Moore, who wrote um, Traffic. It's, so. You, you can't say there's no quality going into this movie. And Sam Raimi had a vision for it. They paid very good detail to making it period accurate, although definitely um, <clears throat> over the top because Sam Raimi. So I'm, I loved it when I first saw it uh, years ago. I haven't seen it since. So I'm hoping that it's just going to be a ham and cheese fun film. Turn your brain off and just enjoy the fact that none of everything makes sense, even though they made sure to make the setting as accurate as possible. Nigel, what about you? How are you expecting to like this film? Um, I've never seen it, actually, which is amazing because I've seen most of Sam Raimi's films, but uh, this one's always seemed to either have eluded me or have just never watched it. I've seen bits and pieces of it, clips from YouTube, clips on different documentaries and movies stuff and channels whatever but i've never actually seen the movie in its entirety i've never seen more than one or two minutes of it at a time um i'm kind of looking forward to seeing it just because i was you know when when i was doing some research for the movie for during the week like you tom i kind of realized that the background the making of was kind of had the potential to be more interesting than the movie itself Mm -hmm. so i'm like wow like sharon stone is kind of a meme now because of the basic instinct stuff and all that but like she had some serious pull you know, back in the day. So it's kind of impressive that she's the one that wanted DiCaprio and Russell Crowe and them. And like Gene Hackman was like eager to get on this movie and, and work with her. You get the rub from Gene Hackman. I, I, I imagine that's got to take you places in Hollywood. I, I think what I'm mostly looking forward to is like I mentioned in the intro is that this was a movie that had a lot of established stars at the time of 1995 or at the time in in the 90s they were up and comers but now they're established stars you know like russell crowe like leonardo dicaprio you know even the dude from saw is in this movie that's right yeah i love to see movies where we see the prototype of the movie star actor that we eventually come to know and love that's what i liked about watching top gun back in the day like we got to see early tom cruise before he becomes tom cruise Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's what I want to see. I want to see early DiCaprio and early Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe before he could just phone in a performance. Yeah, but this is where he had to like earn that uh, the ability to phone in a performance. So what about you, Josh? What are you looking forward to, even though you hate Westerns? Well, um, honestly, I'm just really looking forward to the fourth uh, take on the Sam Raimi's Dead series. The Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, and then the Quick and the Dead. So I'm just a huge <laughs> fan. <laughs> Not the same universe. <laughs> Not Wait, the, what? Not the same universe. <laughs> wait, wait, this isn't a zombie movie? <laughs> this is... God. Again, no. But Sam Raimi and dead. I mean, come on. Isn't it obvious? I jest. No, um, well, as you know, I am not a huge fan of westerns. I tend to not go out of my way to watch them. I have watched a handful in my time. And I've been force-fed a few of them in my time. Just listen to previous episodes for those. But I I don't have high expectations. I do like Sam Raimi. So I am anxious to see Bruce Campbell's cameo in this one. Um, I haven't seen this, obviously. 
but my expectations aren't super high. I, I understand when you guys say over the top. So I understand Sam Raimi's direction enough to understand this. Like, I remember being very interested in watching the Warcraft movie directed by Sam Raimi when that was still in the rumor mill. I haven't thought about that in a long time. And it probably would have been better than the Warcraft movie that did come out. I'm imagining that version in my head now. And yeah, that's it, the, the one we got just pisses me off more. I like the one that we got, but I think the Sam Raimi one would have been better. But yeah, I, my expectations aren't super high. If I come out of this with a meh film, I will be happy. But I do want to say, like, to Dan, interested in the prototypes of people, we said similar things about Dead Calm, just laying that out there. Right. And, I mean, even though we didn't enjoy that movie, I did enjoy seeing the quote-unquote prototypes of the actors that we eventually got to know better. Their performances in Dead Calm weren't bad. It's just there was nothing for them to do. <laughs> that, that was the problem with Dead Calm. Was that Or chemistry. Yeah, there wasn't any chemistry, but I don't I, like. I don't think Sam Neill or uh, Nicole Kidman were, were bad in that movie. I just thought that there was nothing for them to do. Mm-hmm. Although I did think Sam Neill was a little miscast. Anyways, we're not talking about Dead Calm. That one is sunk. So, you know. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's just like uh, my expectations aren't high at all. Like if yeah. I enjoy, if I come out of this and just halfway enjoyed the movie, or I thought it had good moments, I'll be happy, and it will have met ex- exceeded expectations by that point. Well, if it helps out old Josh, Sam Raimi was picked not for his ability to make um, Western films, but to make Army of Darkness films. And he brought a bit of that to it. So don't expect it to be a Western. Expect it to be Sam Raimi in a Western setting. It's been like 15, 16 years since I've seen Army of Darkness. I remember enjoying it, but remembering it was a ham fest. Yes. Okay, so imagine prototype Spider-Man Sam Raimi. This is what you're going to get. Sam Raimi with a budget. That's always scary, in my opinion. But, you know, Tom, you seem to be giving us a lot of really good trivia on Sam Raimi. And uh, in this movie in general. I am, Josh. And you know what? I've got a lot more where that came from. And I'm about to challenge you on some of it. I've got... Skip, skip. Dan. No, no. Say the music line. No, yeah, no, no, sorry. Tom, this is one... Tom, play the music. No, this is one of those early DVDs, fellas. You can't skip this segment. Music, music, music. Tom, Josh, I'm pushing ah. the music button and nothing's happening. Ah. Why ah. is Tom doing this to us? <laughs> Seriously. I have control. I mean, look, you can see me pushing the button. It ain't working. See? <laughs> Speaking of not working, I found on the internet several people who obviously had too much time on their hands and decided to give their opinions about this film and i'm going to ask you about them so per the usual rules i've picked several reviews from one to ten star on imdb and i will tell you one or two sentences from those reviews and it'll be your job to guess between one star to ten star what they felt of the film person who gets closest Gets the point. Person who gets on the money gets it exactly right. Gets two points. Person with the most points at the end of five questions wins. And I do have a bonus question if we need to come to it. All right. So I think I'm going to start with Dan. So this review comes from Desert Man 84 who says, simply one dimensional. That's, I'm going to say that's a two star review. Josh. Um, God damn. Because I was going to say like a one star review, but I feel like I'd be boxing myself in. But at the same time, I think it's a one star review. I guess let's just try uh, go with three star. I think it's a three star. Josh gets a point. This is actually an eight star review. <laughs> God <damn> what? <laughs> yes. Even the high reviews are kind of snarky towards this film. So that'll be the mood setter for the rest of some of these, excuse me, reviews here. Wow. I Why know, did we let I... Tom do this? Why did I lose last week? This is my fault, Dan. I'm sorry. Yep. You yep. yep. yeah. yourself to blame. What well, you're, I... you're, you're in the lead now, so you might win this week. Yeah, there but... you go. Why are you complaining? But speaking of complaining, this review comes from Cogenerate, who says, almost a real good movie. Josh, you get the first guess. Um, I'm going to go four star. Read that again, Tom. Almost a real good movie. Josh said four. I'm going to say five. Uh, I think you got it. No, you got it on the oh, money, shit. Josh. 
That was on the money. That was a four-star review. Damn. I'm, I'm done. done. I'm pushing the button again. Play the music. <laughs> you still have time. There's still more to go through. You can Damn. still... Nice. Go me. <laughs> All right. This next one comes from the Anorexorcist. <laughs> that name. Oh, God. The Anorexorcist who says... Is it possible to improve on perfection? Nigel, I think this is yours. Nine star review. I'm going to go... Is it possible? That sounds like a really high one, but I'm going to go eight. Holy shit, Josh! That's another one on the money. Damn! (laughs) I'm getting getting destroyed in this one. Jupiter and Saturn have aligned. It is my weekend. (laughs) Son of a bitch. Well... Technically, you've won this. There's still two yeah. questions left, left, but it's uh, five to nothing. <laughs> this is this is fitting though. Then that means Josh gets to do trivia for Superman, and that's the one he wanted to do anyways. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, let's 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 get uh, the other two here, so we can just, you know, Josh can really just destroy the hell out of you, Nigel. Awesome. Yep. So, uh, Nigel. <laughs> God damn it. I think Josh, yeah, Josh gets the, the guess this one first. This one com- comes from Tom's Upple, or is it Tom's Up 1 1? I can't tell. They say, it wasn't quick, and you will wish you were dead. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go four star again. I'm going to go two. I just closest. This is a one star review. Oh, yeah. So, Dan, it's not a total shutout. Woohoo! <laughs> I beat uh, the spread. <laughs> Just like a Browns fan. <laughs> hey, your team's doing good this year. You're right, we are. So it's just like a Bengals fan. <laughs> ah, uh, fuck it. Uh, I don't okay, get, get that the... reference. <laughs> but hopefully you'll get this guess, even though Nigel gets the first one on this one. This one comes from Droog56936. And they say, if this movie doesn't get your pulse running from the very beginning, then you are already dead. <laughs> Ten star. Josh? I'm just going to take the easy way out and say a nine. Dan gets the double point. That was a 10 star review. Nice. Yes. I'll see those. Ended up being three to four. Five. Yeah. Three to five. So you, I mean, you closed the spread a bit there, Nigel. Woo-hoo. I mean, it was still, you know, exercise in futility, but you know what? Our fans <laughs> like hearing all five questions. We do this for them. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of them, Josh, you're going to be doing it for us next week you damn right i am oh yeah but i think gentlemen that's pretty good do we have anything else we want to say about this movie anything else we want to say in general while we're hiding from I, I got, a I got scientist yeah I, do. I have one i have one last thing to say tom play the music Welcome back to another rootin' tootin' pistol shootin' episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and keeper of the prize money, Tom. And I tell you what, partner, I'm sure getting my money's worth on this here cowboy voice in this journey. Yeehaw! And what a journey it's been, taking cowboys, cars, and capes, and flying high into the hero's journey. One more stop that's to the daddy of all superheroes, Superman. And while we're on the subject of superheroes, I do believe our team has finally snagged one of their own. Well, let's check in and see how that meeting's going so far. This is it. This is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Ah, uh, Professor Metzger, I presume. I'm Tom, and we're so... Ah, it's such an honor to finally meet you in person. Oh, wow. Hi, that's quite the handshake you have. Happy to meet you. Where are my manners? I am Professor Metzger. Thank you for having me. I must say that when I saw the Craigslist ad, I thought, Oh, this is all fooey. But then when I saw who this was for, I thought... How could I refuse? Oh, so you're already a fan of the podcast. That's great. Podcast 9. I'm talking about your fight with the military as the quadratic equation. Quadratic. That was my 
What did you say you were a professor of? Oh, <laughs> silly me. This is an honorary title. I'm actually a psychologist. People are confused when I say I'm a doctor and they assume I can do surgery. Wait, wait, wait. You're a doctor? Yes. Doctor. Dr. Metzger. Metzger! Which is German for butcher. Dr. Butcher. Dr. Butcher. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's a super villain. <laughs> He's a super villain. <laughs> uh. Hello? Hello? I think they're dead. <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm sure they're all right over there. Just a little technical difficulty. But if you think it'd be all right to let people know how all right your products are, or if you're just feeling in, like telling us how all right you are in general, feel free to shoot us a line at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment INC at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line as well as what you're emailing about, whether it's about an ad, some thoughts about an episode, recommendations for a path or a destination, and just shoot it from the hip. And then we'll give it a B. Let it fly. And never bother to follow through. You know, you're a busy person. You don't have time to be waiting around for a response. All that reading, just busy work. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Oh, and by the sound of the clock, it's time to get back to the episode. Thank y'all for joining, and as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. It's getting all the angry typing, Nigel. All right, well, it just started. A dude's running up on a horse. I'm already bored. Man. He had the sights dead on her and everything, and he's, the bullet still missed. He must, have, he must have had that Call of Duty lag. He's nice. A regular old Doc Brown, if he was. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I'm not doing this for 108 minutes. <laughs> it's the only was... Western I can reference. <laughs> they need to bring Spurs back. Well, riding a horse day-to-day -day is kind of uh, not a thing anymore. Who said anything about riding horses? <laughs> that music means he's the bad guy <laughs> no he's not it's hackman with a telescope across the street from a whorehouse i don't know what that man's doing right now checking out the stars yeah yeah then broad daylight so this is 7 a.m god damn that's too early to be shooting at people what's the native american word for duck <laughs> How do I say, I'm going to Google it. How do I say find cover in Apache? <laughs> Dude, they're from the Midwest in like the 1800s. There is no such word in the in their language. Find cover? Behind what? Actually, this, is, the way, this, is, this is out west. You might not be Apache. You might be Comanche. There's got to be some way to say don't get your ass shot. Yeah, like duck, find cover, return fire. The famous spotted horse. They never specified what the spots were, but clearly they're bullet holes. <laughs> the spots are bullet holes. <laughs> the spots are bullet holes. I love the zoom. <laughs> Not at all overused. Dude, Sam Ramy is so directing this, you could tell. Yeah, <laughs> it's got his fingerprints all over it. It was so fast, even the blind guy couldn't see that. Oh, wait, no. That, that makes <laughs> no sense. See, he was quick to get out of there, and he's dead. Okay, but see, this is... <laughs> Boo. I had a horrible dream. I, uh, like 20 years from now, I'd go into this, some movie where I'm like, Dr. Jekyll or some shit. Dr. Jekyll? That book hasn't even been written yet. <laughs> did we see boob? We did see boob, gentlemen. High five. I do my killing before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Am I going to have to mark down every time you make a Back to the Future reference? <laughs> Damn it, I'm going to be at this all day. <laughs> I'll give Raimi this much. He's making it an interesting watch. Yeah. It's not a good watch, but it's interesting. It's an epileptic watch. Also, yes. Hackman and the Crow. I'd watch that. I, I watch that. yeah, I'd watch it too. Sounds like Dan wants to go back in time before we watch this movie. Damn it, I'm bad at this. All right, I'm turning Star Trek Online back on. Let the sea of dawn is because I allow it. I'm in charge of everything. I decide who lives or who dies. Now bring me Superman. I can't. I can't. You know, have my chance. <laughs> this dialogue is so bad. Oh my god, it is terrible. Oh my god. Where the fuck is the rain coming from? He, oh no! might, he might as well just say, You've all, you're already dead. You might as well be quick. <laughs> Seriously, am I right? Daddy? That's fucked up. God damn, Leo, you know how to act. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you were poorly used. If I was one of those Fifth Amendment types, I'd be wetting myself right now. This Second is... Second Amendment, Tom. The Fifth no, Amendment means you He don't... doesn't want to speak and incriminate himself. Okay, right. <laughs> right. That guy reeks as the type of guy who's such a big sports fan. He, like, paints his car his favorite team's color scheme. It's like, we get it, dude. You're a douchebag. All right, I'm going to get a drink. <laughs> Did Dan paint his car without me knowing? I, I think he might have. <laughs> no, but I did choose the color of my car based on my favorite team. <laughs> Wasn't that the song from Predator 2? Might have been. Holy shit. They lifted the score from Predator 2. Uh, okay. So Hold you. Yep, this is... yep, they're doing it. I wanted to be known she's had all of like, okay. <laughs> you can have whatever you want. It's yeah. yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously, I'll leave whoever for whomever, whatever. I need to write this down. <laughs> Dead vigorously typing. <laughs> <laughs> she's had all of three scenes with him and it's just banging the god out of him. I think we know now why Sharon Stone wanted him for this movie. Sammy, we're going to need a couple takes for this scene. Like, several. We're going to rehearse in my room before. Just the two of us. I didn't feel he grabbed my ass convincingly enough. But can we have another? I'll be in my trailer. You know, I'm lampooning this film in directing style, but so many modern action films have lifted so much from this. Do not tell me you can't see Transformers or Avengers or any other oh, film, yeah, yeah. film in this movie right here. Hell, I'm seeing Gladiator in it, and that's a, that was like four years after this. Like I, I'm seeing why Russell Crowe got cast in Gladiator watching this movie. Russell Crowe, you are the best part of this bad film. <laughs> God damn this movie. Jesus. <laughs> 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 oh, is that a oh. condom in the back of his I, head? Bots, <laughs> bots and listeners of the Fire Pit Podcast, I present to you my list. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I will admit one thing. I do hope season three of The Mandalorian has an episode like this. But instead of the guys, they're Jawas. I'd watch that episode. And now, back to the episode. Oh, well, boy. That was a movie. So, Nigel, do you want to tell us about it? Uh, okay. Here's the summary. So the movie starts off in the obvious Old West, a guy digging up a bunch of holes or something. I think he's looking for treasure. It's the guy from Saw! Hooray! Uh, and another person's riding up on him, and he tries to shoot them, and he thinks he had did, but it had Call of Duty lag, so the bullet, no one knows where it went. 
but he goes to inspect the person he shot and they turn around and they knock him out and they tie him to the wagon and it introduces them to the character of Sharon Stone, uh, the lady. She's only known as the lady in this movie. I don't think they actually gave her a name. They just refer to her as the lady. Anyways, so she uh, gets back on her horse and she rides into town and she goes into a saloon and there's a bunch of like characters in the saloon and these guys are literally old west caricatures you know there's the guy with, with all leather holding up a deck of aces about every man he's killed and he's got fancy shiny silver guns that he's got in, on his waist and there's the drunk irishman guy and like i said they're all different characters anyway she goes into the bar she's uh hanging out with all these people and then we're introduced to other characters like Leonardo DiCaprio's The Kid and a bunch of others. And then finally Gene Hackman shows up uh, being all scary and menacing uh, as only Gene Hackman can be. And they mention that they're going to have this big gunfight tournament in town. And there's like $100,000 to win if you win this gunfight tournament. And everyone puts their names in on this board to go into the tournament. And then they introduce Russell Crowe's character. And you find out Russell Crowe was a member of Gene Hackman's gang at one point in time, but now he's a preacher. So he's forced to be in this tournament too, but he only gets a rusty gun with one bullet. There's a lot of montages and a lot of zooming. <laughs> Lots of zooming. Um, and, so much zooming. Yeah, so much zooming. All the characters uh, that the, nobody cares about are getting killed. And then it gets straight to the characters that we want to see die or live, uh, mostly die. Then first, uh, you know, like Lance Hendrickson's character gets killed, and then... Um, the saw guy gets killed. A bunch of other people get killed. The, the Native American who says, I, I can't be killed by any bullets. He gets killed by a bullet. And then there were only like the final four. Gene Hackman goes against the kid and he kills him with a gut shot, which is kind of a dick move because you die slowly and painfully. And then he makes Russell Crowe and Sharon Stone's character fight. And it looks like Russell Crowe kills Sharon Stone's character. So he gets moved to the finals to fight against Gene Hackman. And just as they're about to draw... All the buildings in this town explode, all of them. And then after that, uh, the lady comes out of the fiery wreckage and Gene Hammond's all like, you're dead, you're supposed to be dead. And she's obviously not dead. And they have another flashback that explains that, oh, Gene Hackman made her kill her father because he's a sadistic asshole. And they do another quick draw and she wins and kills him by shooting him in the eye and making him flip backwards because that's how guns worked in the old West. And then she literally rides off into the sunset while she tells Russell Crowe, you're the mayor of this town now. Because she just blew it all up and she doesn't want to be, you know, asked with rebuilding it. That's it. That is The Quick and the Dead. It was both a quick movie and um, I'm dead inside <laughs> watching it. <laughs> Tom, Tom, faded, Tom, yeah, Tom faded. Tom faded. Tom <laughs> Tom laughed <laughs> off into the sunset. Yeah, Tom literally <laughs> laughed off into the sunset with that summary. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna die now. Oh my shit. Oh lordy lordy lordy. Okay. Josh, it's a western. Again. What are your <laughs> thoughts on this movie? That I'll just be up front. I didn't like it. I had fun watching it. But oh. overall, I didn't like the movie. I, I probably won't watch this movie again, but oh my God, it was so campy. Some of the dialogue was just bad. Oh my God, the camera work was just as expected. I would have to say regarding my expectations, I don't know if it met my expectations, but it came damn close to it. Like it's a fine line, like from a distance, you can't really tell, I'd imagine. But oh, that movie was a movie. Um... It definitely had a lot of characters. I definitely credit uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I liked his character. Um, and Dan, she actually did have a name. Russell Crowe called her Ellen at one point. Oh. Like, you don't have to shoot me, Ellen. So oh, that's. I don't remember that part. Uh, I just I looked up IMDb and she was just called the lady. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. It could have been fuck up on the subtitles, but she was Ellen, according to Russell Crowe, at least from what I saw, unless I fucked up, fucked it up too. But no, this movie was. Uh, I don't know, it was a fun movie. I'll give it that. Um, but it's like, it's a weird mix of trying to take itself seriously while also understanding that it's a campy Western. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's this weird blend of we want to, we're a dead serious movie. We are completely honest actors and we have a, we're, we're not phoning it in. We're 
acting 100% of our ability. But it's like the actors didn't know that the movie was supposed to be campy, but Sam Raimi directed it like it was the most campiest thing ever. But everybody's like, okay, this is a totally serious film, guys. So uh, we're talking Academy Awards and everything. So best acting faces on. Leo, you too. I mean, I'll, granted, when Leo got shot, that was like a freaking awesome performance. You almost felt bad for him. But honestly, I, just, I don't know. I felt like if this movie would have been PG-13 and you easily toned down a few of the scenes, they probably would have got a lot more people to watch it and may have been stayed in theaters more than three weeks. No, it was it was a good movie, but I'm not going to go out of my way to watch this movie again. So that's that. So, Dan, how about you? What did you think of it? You haven't seen this either, hadn't you? No, I've never seen this film, and I probably won't see it again. Um I like I, I'm with you, Josh. I had fun watching it. And this was a bad film. I'm not gonna mince words. This is a bad film. It's over the top. It's pretty stupid as far as a story goes. It's just I mean, it's um uh Western trope after Western caricature after Western stereotype you could possibly think of. They had so many guns I called it started calling them in my head gun smoke zooms in this movie that I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> stop it it's almost like they discovered that feature on the camera and they couldn't stop themselves from doing it but this was one of those so bad movies that it's turned back around to being kind of good and entertaining it wasn't like last week's movie last week was a bad film that continued to be a bad film all the way through until the credits this movie didn't become a good film but it became an entertaining film and i did like the, a lot of the individual performances in the movie i really dug it leonardo dicaprio's performance in the movie i liked russell crowe's performance in the movie and I really like Gene Hackman's performance in the movie. And Sharon Stone was fine when she was acting opposite one of those guys. But when she was in the cemetery with the old doctor guy in the town, that scene was just, who wrote that dialogue? Was that the draft one? Like, that was just so bad. That whole, you've been dead a long time. You're just afraid of living. Like, that is such a cliche line. Just so cringe not that the dialogue in the movie as a whole wasn't oscar worthy but like that scene was so ugh. but i like the individual performances of the movie as far as some of the other actors go oh and i like the other bit parts too like i liked lance henriksen's character his acting and i liked keith david's little part like like they got a lot of pretty good at character actors in this movie to do bit roles and that was cool but um overall yeah this movie was it's pretty awful <laughs> <laughs> so, it was pretty bad. Um, Tom. <laughs> I have one question which never occurred to me the first time I saw this and didn't occur to me until just now. How the hell did she get all that dynamite into all of those buildings and get them to blow up at the same time like that? I don't know. And I also was genuinely wondering, like, how many other people did they kill with all those explosions? Because... Even if the buildings were completely empty, like back then those buildings were made out of wood and nails. So you've just made the entire town a Claymore mine. Like <laughs> yes. the whole fucking town's a Claymore mine. So like And, and Russell Crowe has to deal with like all of that mess. Yeah, have. like like you killed Gene Hackman at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, but yeah, you killed Gene Hackman at the end of the movie. Okay, congratulations. You also killed 30 other people in this town and probably wounded another four dozen more. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's, yeah, it that was a nonsensical scene. Like that was, that scene was so like, why was it yeah. necessary? It's like the rain in that one scene where they had the clear sky. Just, yes. you don't know where the rain came from. Just like, you don't know how she got the dynamite into those buildings. Yeah, and it, how many I, people did they kill in the collateral damage? Yes. This this brings up, okay, I didn't come up with this name, but no one ever really codified this. Much like there's a Bechdel test to determine, uh, you know, the feminist nature of a film, uh, mm -hmm. there needs to, there should be, or someone else came up with the idea of a bechamel test, a test where you determine whether a film is a bad film or just a cheesy film. And I think we can apply a little bit to this. Does this pass the bechamel ch test of cheesiness? So at least one memeable scene and one memeable line. The main character has to have one lost family member or is trying to re reconnect with an estranged spouse. And there at least has to be one relatable sidekick who's not directly a sidekick, but you identify them as a sidekick. And I think this film passed that bechamel test. You have... 
more than one memeable scene, which come on every time they do those quick zooms that Raimi just faps over every time. <laughs> you could me make so many memes to the any of those scenes. Uh, any of those memeable lines like um, Leonardo DiCaprio saying, God damn, that was fast. Or any of those. I think there's at least three of those lines. Uh, like Josh, Dan, can you think of a line from this film that you would say, that's a meme? I could meme hey, to that. Dan, I, I don't, I think uh, Tom needs to stay the fuck away from Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I had to pick one memeable line, it was definitely the one I mentioned earlier. The whole, you're so afraid, of, you've been dead a long time. You know, you're just afraid of living. Like, I, that line's been done to death. Like, that is such a cliche line. But continue with your thoughts, Tom. Yeah, but I mean, but we got the main character. I mean, she's trying to avenge her dead dad. You've got Russell Crowe, who is the obvious like sidekick character. Or no, the blind kid. The blind kid may be the sidekick ter- character. So we will have to codify this a little bit more in another movie. But I think this film passes just barely into the cheesy film because it's just so bad you both said in your summaries i'm not going to retread well i agree everything you said it's just bad Raimi tried too hard everyone tried too hard they trained quick draw for months they made sure all the guns were not just period accurate but they made them look as old as they would have at that time sharon stone hand picked most of these people stone's clothes were from a freaking museum they made this as accurate as they could why couldn't they have made this good guys why couldn't they have made this good i think this falls in the uh, category of um sam Raimi had too much of a budget because it's like he has too much of a budget he goes crazy but when you give him a tight budget he shits gold records type thing yeah. i have to agree yeah yeah and, and, i mean and honestly like you were mentioning tom when the explosion started going off that like this was joss whedon's rewrite like they asked him to come in and rewrite the ending how bad was the original ending sequence that the, he had to come back and write that? Because that was shit, too. Like, <laughs> how bad was the original ending sequence? I mean, I, I just don't know what they had originally planned. Maybe a retread of the whole chair hanging scene for the third time. I don't know. There's no record of it anywhere. I, I started Googling it when you told me that it was a rewrite. There's no record. They never filmed the original ending. They just came and, and wrote it and then filmed it later. And so, like, how bad was the original ending? Like, the rewrite ending is turn town into Claymore. Like, <laughs> which on paper sounds good. Let's not kid ourselves. I'd sign off on that, but hey, those explosions looked cool. Those explosions did look cool. And it was a cool sequence. It was just a stupid, pointless sequence. It was the car crash in Batman v Superman. I mean, the car chase in Batman v Superman. Awesome sequence. Balls to the wall action. Fucking pointless to the plot. Yeah. Like, Mm-hmm. You know, and that's exactly what this last scene was with all the explosions and just, you know, basically killing the whole town to kill one person. Congratulations. So, yeah. And I blame it on the writing, too. I mean, this this guy, they Wait, rewrote what his... writing? <laughs> exactly, Josh. Exactly. They had someone come in to rewrite some Simon Moore's script, and then it was I guess it was too long, so they had him rewrite the rewrites, and he just gave them back the original script. No, they should have said, uh, no, 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 no. Someone tried to rewrite this script for a reason, new, and yeah. what we got was, oh boy, just the most trite, cliche, fan ficky bullshit. Yeah, it was just really just like I said, it was just a weird movie. Like it, there were it showed signs that it was gonna be good. Like I, I thought the introduction of Hackman's character was awesome. I thought he was like scary and he, he was brilliant in his performance and uh, had you on the edge of your seat. And I actually was thinking to myself at that point in the movie, I'm like, hey, this might be a hidden gem. This might be a pretty decent flick. And no. No, it, that, that was the last good scene. Like, I mean, like, oh, okay, okay. So yeah. it, It's one of those things. I think the movie was well cast. It was definitely the sets and the setting and everything was well done. I think that Sam Raimi was the wrong director for this film. The cake had all the ingredients. They fucked up the frosting. It's either that or they took a uh, the ingredients to make a great cake, but then they set the settings t- to make brownies. 
Yeah, or yeah. They, they cooked they cooked it too long or not enough. Or actually, this kind of feels like not enough. It just kind of feels like the, the script probably could have used a little bit more fine tuning. Like it just mm-hmm. they let Walmart make it. Yes, yes, yeah. And yes. It, there were some sequences that, that camera work needed a little more tune up. We needed to cut the zooms were kind of cool as a nice little homage, but there were just too many of them. Kind of like on Aquaman. Um, Dude, they were cool for the first like five minutes yeah but just then like after the... almost two hours you're like oh my god stop well, it, was, it was a lot like the zooms in aquaman like they stop losing their effectiveness when you use them in every camera shot yeah but keep these were just too, keep in mind it was on our fourth watch of aquaman that we actually noticed them dan and it was tom <laughs> of all people who right. pointed them out yeah but this one like sam raby just could not help himself he was just so proud of those like oh, see what god. i can do mom yeah. Or the freaking bullet shot, you know, where the camera is the bullet. God, uh, he did that like seven times. He has two or three tricks, but boy, does he use those. Oh, my God. Going back to the cooking mer- uh, metaphor, it, it didn't help that we had Sharon Stone as the cook, and this was a complete vanity project. She, Someone else should have said, uh, Sharon, Sharon, no, 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 no. You're, you're, a, a, you're a side producer. You have a title of co-producer you do not make decisions let us who know how to make films make decisions please yeah but but at the time 1995 sharon stone was a pretty hot commodity in hollywood Mm. so i can see why you know she was definitely um given a uh, a lot of slack on this one would you guys agree with me that she was miscast as the main character no, I didn't. No, like I, said, I didn't I have a problem with her performance. Good. I didn't have a problem with her performance. I, the only time I had a problem with her performance is when she was like not with another strong actor. Yeah, um, and that's actually that been one graveyard uh, scene. It was pretty bad, but yeah. I would have to say Sharon Stone was really good overall. Yeah, she held her own pretty good against like Gene Hackman, and then obviously, you know, at the time, Leonardo DiCaprio was like this is like maybe his third or fourth film, but you know, she was fine with him and, and same with and this was russell crowe's first american film and he was she was fine with him so i i don't think she was miscast but you again it goes back to what you guys were saying it's like she was fine when she was against stronger well, actors dan was saying i think that she was fine i just think the dialogue was all wonky in the graveyard scene but i i think that she did a great job i think that the cast was all just very well done, but uh, I don't think it was anything referenced to the actor she was playing against. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. Like I said, I don't think she was all that bad in this mm-hmm. movie. I mean, she yeah, was. Do I think that somebody else could do a better job? Probably. Could I think a lot of people could do a worse job? Yeah, I think. Thing, I think she did a good yeah. job. Like not a great job, not a terrible job. I think she did a good job. Yeah, she was fine. Would you guys say this film would benefit from a remake? Yes, actually, this is this is one of those cases where. I, uh, the meme that was going around for a while with the, the Lisa Simpson meme was saying, stop remaking good movies, remake the either the bad or the underperforming movies and make them good. This is one of those cases where it, so I'd like to see someone give this another shot. I agree. <laughs> I, like I said, I think a good director, but uh, it, uh, I did already kind of answer this question. I would love to see this in a uh, episode of The Mandalorian next season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of agree just, with you, Josh. Yeah, That's... the plot would be great. I mean, think about it. Because mm-hmm. this is like a half hour episode, like stretched out to almost two hours. Yeah. Yeah. God, it was stretched out. <laughs> yeah, I would. But and if they were to make this into a movie, I would like to see this be remade. I would. I, I think this would be cool to be remade, especially in today's Hollywood, because this was a rarity in 1995 where the woman protagonist was the main character and she was just as capable as the men and all that. Yeah. Today's Hollywood's kind of really trying to jump on that train. So this would definitely benefit from a rewrite or a and remake. We, and we did note that watching this film, like a lot of the over the top nature of this, we see now in mo- modern Hollywood, maybe it was ahead of its time and maybe it, with the modern director, like they would know how to actually handle the material it's possible, it's possible. Yes, but actually no no i have to agree with josh yes but actually no <laughs> yes but please don't please yeah, don't uh, no this movie just yeah no <laughs> josh would you recommend this to anyone are you trying to like set these questions up to be asked every do you have like a checklist now that you're going no to no i'm actually curious you've asked now. this like the past three weeks I'm actually curious now. No, it's like some films are still, especially the bad films. Well, let's see here, Tom. I have gone on saying that this is a bad film. 
that I wouldn't watch it again. Um, oh. That I think the actors are okay, but the director sucks. <laughs> that I don't like the film. Did I also mention that I am not a huge fan of this film? Do you think, Tom, that I would recommend this movie? Now, hang on. Don't answer that. Dan, do you think I would uh, recommend this film? Yes. On the head. <laughs> <laughs> I am a master of reading the room. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, I think you've answered your own question. No one here is going to recommend this film. No, definitely not. No. Now, I uh, unless me. you're a diehard Sam Raimi fan and you want to see Sam Raimi unchecked. <laughs> like, just, here you go. But you know, other than that, no. Sam Raimi, I do have a small thing. I, I'm looking at his IMDb page. Did you know he had three other movies between this one and Spider-Man? A Simple Plan for the Love of the Game, which I couldn't believe he directed, and The Gift. And then he had all three Spider-Man movies. And then a movie, uh, Tom, you and I watched, Drag Me to Hell. Remember how campy we thought that film was? Oh, God, that was such a terrible film. That was lousy yeah, as hell. I thought it had a couple of creepy scenes. But it's like, I'm thinking back and put the parallels between that film and this film. And I think that we felt about the same about that film as we felt about this film. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also... Did you see Oz the Great and Powerful? I didn't realize he directed that until I checked his IMDb page. Yes, and I didn't either, but it's like everything about that film looked like shit. And watching this film, like, oh, they gave Sam Raimi nothing but CG and an unlimited budget. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I can only imagine how bad that film is. And he's going to be directing Doctor Strange. Is They're giving him Doctor Strange, guys. Oh, oh, he's doing Multiverse of Madness. Oh, yeah, but, no, no, the that. first two Spider-Man movies are pretty good. The yeah, third again, one, the third one is, the, is the rough one. So I was just thinking Spider-Man 2 is still one of the best comic book movies ever made. Yeah, and I would say the MCU is... They, they, gotta, I oh, would they say play it was, safe. They play it very safe. Yeah, they it's not a super directors... tight... Yeah, it's not, a super, it's not a super tight ship on the MCU, but it's still a tight ship. Like, it's definitely guarded... Um, I would actually be more nervous if Sam Raimi was doing a DC film than a Marvel film. Oh, oh yeah. shit, he's directing the King Killer Chronicles. He's doing the what, Chronicles? Oh, my God, the King Killer Chronicle. I They're making don't... a movie about the King Killer Chronicles. The what? I don't know how I feel about that. I, I don't even know what to feel about that. Yeah. What are it's the King a, Killer Chronicles? It's a Patrick Rothfuss book. He's only released, <gasps> like, two books. <gasps> I know the book, books you're talking about. I have some friends who are big into that series, oh, and... It's... Such an amazing, it's like dark Harry Potter, but uh, it's fantastic books. And people will probably shoot me for using that reference. I, I don't even know, know how to describe it. I've read the books twice. They're awesome. He's directing it, and now I'm kind of scared. Oh, it's either no. Either going to be awesome or terrible. That, it, like, honestly, I had more of a gut punch on that one than I did when I realized he was directing. But we are tangented, so I think I've I've hit all the notes and then some. What about you guys? Uh, yeah, I have. Josh, anything else from you? I think I'm good. All right. Well, that does it for tonight's show, everyone. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts, be sure to like and subscribe, as it really does help out the podcast. And uh, be sure to join us on Discord and have some fun interacting with us. Talk amongst some of our uh, fledgling fans. Uh, they're kind of lonely in there, so uh, join up, and you can talk with uh, our good friends Tyrick Thorne and Rob from Rob's Custom PCs, and uh, Tucker, whoever she is. So, uh, yeah, join the uh, Discord. And also, you can give us some movie pass and feedback. And uh, please also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm trying to get better about using the Twitter. I'm old. So, bear with me. You are. You are very old. But if you do want to reach us uh, old school, you can uh, always email us at that uh, very long and convoluted uh, email address that Tom said in the interspersal. He enjoys saying it. You know, you're you're more than welcome to send us an email, and we'll my stuff talk. I don't know. Links in the email and social media, whatever. Blah 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 blah. You can get a hold of us at our website at firepit.podbean.com. And from my side, I would like to give a shout out to our latest follower on Facebook, John. Thanks for joining, John. I've been 
uh, pestering him to pop in, and he's popped in. So good to have you on. We also have Patsy and Cindy, two other new members. Again, I'm abstaining from last names unless otherwise approved. And also, we have a lot of Facebook members to thank for joining. Uh, so I am apologize if I'm not getting to you yet, but I promise I will hopefully eventually get to all of you. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it and appreciate you keeping those fire pit fires burning. And uh, I would like to first off give a special birthday shout out to Peggy, friend of the channel. Uh, it was her birthday this past week. Thank you for another year. Glad you're a friend of the channel. And also a special shout out to uh, Anthony and Nick, uh, two co-workers of mine that are now listening to the podcast. Welcome aboard. Glad you're joining it. Join the Discord. Talk some shit. It's great. And uh, Anthony, uh, I promise some point in time we're going to get to a Ghostbusters film. I promise. <laughs> we'll get there. He's a big Ghostbusters fan. So, yeah, we will we'll, we'll, we will get to a Ghostbusters film. They're not going to be avoided forever. And we're not avoiding them. We just haven't got to one. But there we go. And I would like to give a shout out to uh, my mom and dad. See, there, I gave you guys a shout out. I love you. <laughs> also, uh, that was a little bit of an inside joke in case you guys didn't catch it. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, I got it. I, I picked up on it. Yeah, just a little bit. And that's it. So, yeah, mom and dad, thank you for listening. Because I don't have any friends outside of you, you two. We are all you've got. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is true. Uh, 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 uh. So, Josh, where are we going to next? Well, you know, for having an English degree, you sure don't understand the definition of the word penultimate. Dan, do you want to explain that to him, please? No. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> penultimate. Uh, it uh, means second to last, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's so, usually... So, Tom, what's the last movie on this journey? I don't know, Josh. I mean, is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's Superman. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> well, I so guess... Wait, 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 wait. Week, but... Are we watching Superman or Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> I've hey, been Josh. Having... I've been Dan. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. <laughs> This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. <laughs> yes, join me, Quadratic Equation, and with my Take Them Over in Ator, your dividend of devastation, we shall conquer the whole of the Tri-County area, and then possibly the whole state. <laughs> Look at my robot legs! See how they tremble in anticipation! <laughs> Tom, edit that out! Okay, so the superhero that we booked is actually some kind of crazy ass super villain. Way to fuck it up, Tom. What now? Ask him to go away. <laughs> hey! We don't want you on the show! Oh, God. He's going to think about it. Uh, guys, I, I totally forgot. I have, I have a thing. Jesus Christ. It's like Dan to just run away at a time like this. Okay, we're fine. We're, fine. we're not fine. We're not fine. Oh, Jesus. What are we going to do now, guys? What are we going to do now? What is the team going to do now? What will our team do now that their superhero guest has turned out to be a villain crasher? And how will this affect the ratings? Find out next week. Same fire pit time, same fire pit channel.